Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and this is another episode of Cake Rescue where I take viral cake fails and show you how to rescue them. Let's start with the toppling towers of some very tall cakes. Emmy's kitchen had this one collapse in transit and she said she just cried when she got there and saw it. This cake went on a 45 minute journey successfully before toppling over on a U-turn. Cakes by Jean made a great Batman cake that was badly damaged when the customer drove it home. And Sweetie Pie Dublin made this beautiful cake for a customer. And after it left the store, it ended up looking like this. So first of all, let's recreate the fail and then we'll talk about how to fix it. Tall cakes that are being transported need two types of support. They need vertical support, which is to support the weight of the cake from being squashed by the other cakes that are stacked up on top of it. But they're also going to need support to stop them from toppling over. And that is a different type of support. For that, you need something that's attached to the baseboard. You could use a metal rod secured with nuts underneath and on top if you have a wooden board. And then the center of the cake would have one of these tubes that just slot right over the top. And if possible, you transport the cake with the tiers separate and when you get to the venue, you just slot the next tier on top and that rod makes sure it's 100% central and it also stops it falling off in transit. You're also going to need a strong central support like this in top heavy cakes, like I showed you with the Minion Cake, the Rocket Cake, My Little Pony, Anime, Watering Can Cake, Caramel Popcorn, Prince Harry, Spider-Man, Stand Mixer Cake, all of those are on the channel. But if you're just at home with a normal tall cake and it's just going from the fridge to the table, you don't need that really strong central support. These sort of supports would be ideal. This is a firm hollow plastic tube and this is just a wooden support or at a pinch you could use cake pop sticks but as soon as you need some side to side support these are not going to be enough so let's use these today because we want to make it fail put a cake board on top and stack it up and then let's make another tier to go on top of the first one make it even taller and stack that on top and put it into a box in the car and off we go let's go for a try so far, so good. It only has that vertical support, no horizontal support. It's just come out of the fridge, so that helps make it more secure because the buttercream is quite firm. But if you're driving a long way, you have to consider that buttercream is gonna heat up. We're driving on fairly flat roads here, but I'm gonna ask Dave to turn into a sloped driveway. Now you need to get your before and after shot for Instagram and wipe away your tears and figure out how you're gonna fix this damaged cake. The first thing you wanna do is grab a plate and separate your tears out and we'll deal with each one separately. And remember things like this happen, it's just cake and it's all gonna be okay. Now, because the bottom layer has tipped over, it's let the weight of the cake squash the bottom bit of cake. And even if we stand it up, it won't stay standing for long because that bottom area is now squashed and crumbly and most probably the cake pop stick has probably slipped and is no longer supporting it. So I suggest you add another cake pop stick or a skewer or anything you have in the house that's food safe to prop it up to the height of that cake board so that it won't fall over again. Now to make them look good. Grab some foil that's long enough to wrap around your cake and fold it down so the top is slightly taller than the height of the first tier. Then flip it over and scrunch up the foil. Don't do it so tight that you can't get it apart without ripping it. We just wanna scrunch it up and make sure it's crinkled everywhere. Then use your hands to flatten it out again. Spread some melted compound chocolate over the foil. Now you can use real chocolate here if you know how to temper chocolate, but this is a rescue, so I'm going for the fastest, easiest option and using compound chocolate. Once it's evenly spread, lift the foil and move it to a new spot. That just makes all the edges straight. Let it cool a little, not much, just a little so it's not quite as runny, and then wrap it around your cake. And then you wanna do the exact same thing with the little one. Put them in the fridge for 10 minutes and then peel off the foil. Now you can leave it just like that, or if you have luster dust, you can give it a gentle brush over with some luster dust of your choice of color. Add the smaller cake back on top of the big one 
And yes, you can still see the indent at the bottom, but it's not as noticeable with the crinkly chocolate, and this would be fine if you're having a party. Cake fail number two is that sinking feeling. When a cake comes out of the oven and it sinks down in the center. My neighbor sent me this photo asking if she puts the cake back in the oven, will it go back up? She needed it for a birthday party. Sadly, the answer is no, it won't go back up. They usually sink in the middle if they're not quite cooked enough. Cake cooking times vary so much depending on the oven and the type of dish used when you're baking it. Amaroy was baking a red velvet cake that was clearly underbaked when he took it out. Nini78 baked these three cakes and the big one ended up like this. Often people think they can bake a cake in one large tin instead of two smaller ones. So let's do that and see what happens. I've got one batch of my rich chocolate cake mix here and I'll tip all of that into a big tin. Now I've made up another batch of the exact same recipe and I'm going to split that between two cake pans. Pop them in the oven and 35 minutes later if we take them out we'll put a knife into the middle of this one and it comes out clean so that's done. Always check with a knife don't just go on the time and this is the same recipe same oven and it's definitely not done yet. Now if you check around the edges you can see that it is cooked on the edges but it has to go back in the oven because the middle's not cooked and using a large tin like this can often mean that you overcook the edges and the top before the middle is ready to go. So baking two thinner layers I prefer as the better option. 20 minutes of extra bake time so that's a lot on top and you can see it's hot in the middle but it's still not ready. It takes a lot 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 longer if you put it in the bigger tin. So it needs to go back in the oven but I'm not going to put it back. I'm going to leave it out so that we can watch it sink again <laughs> and then we can rescue it. Now there are several different things you could do with this but I'm just going to level off the top of the cake and then push a cookie cutter down into that middle section and scoop out the center. You'll find it will be properly baked at the very bottom because that was on the heat of the pan. So just push the cookie cutter all the way through and then trim a nice slice of cake from that bottom piece. Now just flip the cake upside down and fill the hole with M&Ms and then add that disc of cake on top. And now you can decorate your cake however you were going to decorate it before it failed because it doesn't look like a fail anymore. I'm going to cover the whole thing with ganache and then pipe swirls of your ganache on top. Happy birthday to you. Cake fail number three is the bucket cake or the plant pot shaped cake and I'm not even sure what went wrong here. I don't know if that's melted fondant or if that's buttercream and they didn't use fondant but they certainly didn't get to what they were going for. Jessica called this one a fail. Now I actually think this one's not too bad, but if you're not happy with it, here is a quick fix that you could do. Melt some compound white chocolate. If you've got some oil-based food coloring, you can use that, otherwise just leave it white. Tip that into a clean bucket or plant pot that has no holes in the bottom. This one is a brand new plant pot and I've washed it to make sure it's 100% clean and you need to make sure it's really, really dry. Then you want to tip that container and swirl the chocolate around so that it goes right to the very top and then tip out the excess chocolate and put it in the fridge for a few minutes to set. That gives us a really thin layer of chocolate and this is just going to break if we try and take it out. So we're just going to repeat that same process a couple of times just to build up the layers and thicken it up especially around that top lip. Once that's set you just pull up and out of the container. Chocolate shrinks a little as it sets so it makes it quite easy to get out. Now it's just a matter of stacking up the cake and the frosting inside of this chocolate container. This is also a great fix for many cake fails because you can put a crumbled mess in here and no one would know. Then put some biscuits into a food processor. If you don't have a processor, you can just put them in a plastic bag and squash them with a rolling pin or a book or anything that you've got that you can hit it with. Then put some frosting onto a cake board or a plate and add your cake. Pile some cookie crumbs on top of the cake. Now, obviously, if you want this to be a plant pot rather than a bucket of sand on the beach, then you'd be better off using Oreos because they crush up and look like soil. You can put some sand around the base too or some cookie crumbs obviously and then if you want a handle on your bucket put some chocolate on a strip of acetate and then just before it's set add it to the side of the bucket. Peel off the acetate 
and add a circle of blue chocolate on top where it joins on each side and you have an impressive looking cake rescue. Okay, one more. There were so many photos of failed bunt cakes, including this one that was for a first birthday party. The trouble with bunt cake tins is that you can't line them with non-stick paper because of their uneven sort of grooves and the grooves also give the cake something to stick to. I'm gonna generously spray one half of this tin with oil and leave the other half ungreased. Then add in my lemon and blueberry cake mixture and bake that. The edge of the side that had oil looks different to the side without. On the oil side, you can also see if I shake it, it is loose. And then if I turn that, you can see this side is stuck in the pan. It's not lifting when I shake it. So what I'd suggest you do at this stage is you get a knife or a spoon and loosen it around the edge wherever it is stuck until when you shake it, it's loose the whole way around. But I'm not gonna do that because I want it to break. So I'm just going to tip it out. Oh, nuts. <laughs> it turned out perfectly. It's very hard to get a fail when you want it to fail. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to rip it apart. That looks more like it. Now you could just eat this, of course. It's cake and it tastes good, but if you were having a party and you want it to be more presentable, here is a fix for you. Grab some yogurt in whatever flavor you like and some cream and some gelatin. And I'll put these recipe quantities on my website for you. Take a third of a cup of that cream and stir it into the gelatin straight away. Then grab a third of a cup of the yogurt and stir that in as well. Whip the rest of the cream until you get soft peaks. Now put the softened gelatin mixture into the microwave to melt it. You wanna stir that until you can no longer see any lumps of gelatin. Now, if you want it sweeter or if your yogurt isn't sweet, add some more sugar into this hot gelatin mixture and stir it till it's dissolved. I'm not adding extra sugar to mine, but you can to yours. Now stir that in with the yogurt. And once that's all combined, then pour that into the whipped cream and fold them together. And you've made a simple yogurt mousse. Scoop that into the bunt pan and put it all the way up and around the edges. Then add your chunks of cake into the pan. Add more and more cake and mousse until you're filled right up to the top. And then we're gonna put this in the freezer. Now that it's frozen, you've got the problem of getting it out of the tin again, of course. <laughs> to do that, put the tin in a sink of warm water and make sure that it doesn't go over the top, of course. You just want it around the edges. Then you'll need to poke a knife down one side to let some air out, otherwise you've got a vacuum and it won't come out. And then it should just pop out of the tin and you can centre that on your plate. Now you could glaze this, but I'm gonna keep it simple and just use a hot spoon to smooth out those bits of mousse that we melted by putting the tin in warm water. Leave it to defrost in the fridge and then serve it up at your party. With thanks to my wonderful patrons for your amazing support. If you like cake rescues, let the algorithm know by liking, commenting, sharing, and watching more of my videos. Make it a great week by being kind to others, and I'll see you on Friday.